working on this board too. So yeah, I actually met someone who submitted their application for the board. Oh, last good. Night. Oh, okay. I was gonna say we haven't heard anything. Some yeah. guy did, and um, I met him last night. Some guy. Hey, sometimes that's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, I know a guy. I, I, right. I'm termed up here. This, at the end of this month, at the end of this year. I got yeah. one more. Yeah. And you. I'm done. You're gonna go off. Keep it, keep us yeah. in suspense. Without, yeah. without Karen here, we're going to That's right. Karen well, squared. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sure whoever they find will be just as awesome as me. That's that right. is. I don't think so. Yeah, that's I not, think, I that's think not a thing. <laughs> that is not a Leroy thing. Leroy turns up this year. He's probably like, he's got it counted down like the minutes. The, the number sure. of meetings, yeah. yeah he he's remind, like, he reminds
on pre lab. Ms. Torrens, Mr. Blaze. Here. Mr. Crockett. Here. Mr. Hebert. Here. And Ms. Shoup. Here. <coughs> Everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> things to come. That's right. All right, do I have a motion to approve minutes from the last zoning board meeting on June 13th? I make a motion to approve the minutes of June 13th, 2018 as printed. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, approval of the draft written decisions for appeals heard on June 13th. Appeal number 2636, <coughs> Sherry Fasulo. I'm assuming everybody's had a chance to review the findings of facts and the notes. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve appeal number 2636. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Make a motion to approve appeal number 2637. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Does anybody have any additional findings of facts that they want to add to these at all? I don't. Anybody? No. Okay. Thank you. Make a motion to appeal, uh, approve appeal number 2638. I'll second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Moving right into the appeals. Appeal number 2639, limited reduction of yard size, request by John Murphy, 8 Shiprick Road, Assessor's Map U1, Paso 53. Please state your name and who you're representing. Uh, Walter Wilson from the design company, uh, representing the applicant. Thank you. Could you give us a brief description? <coughs> sure. Uh, let's see, the appellant is before the board as they propose to construct a second story addition that uh, generally has been found to meet the character standards of the Higgins Beach Code under section uh, Roman numeral 16B of the zoning ordin ordinance, with the exception that the existing dwelling uh, currently does not meet the secondary front setback of a minimum of 12 feet. The applicants before the board has stated for a limited yard, uh, reduction of yard size variance, which allows up to a 10 foot reduction in the yard setback. Um, and this request is for an eight foot uh, variance. Uh, the, the project and the property meets the eligibility criteria for this type of variance appeal, <coughs> um, provided that the applicant can demonstrate to the board that they've met the variance criteria pursuant to the ordinance, uh, zoning ordinance section Roman numeral five, B5. Any other staff comments that you care to relate to us? Uh, no, I think at this time, I think that's okay. right. Go ahead and present what you're looking for. Um, okay, to uh, generally describe the project, um, it, <clears throat> we're going to put a second story, propose a second story of a part of the existing one-story building. Due to the lot coverage limitation of 20% in the back dune area, horizontal addition is not allowed. The second story addition will meet the side, rear, and primary front setback requirement. The secondary front on Burdock cannot meet that because of the building location on, on the property. So a front yard variance is needed, a yard reduction variance is needed, so the proposed second floor addition of 22 by 23 can be constructed. As a result, we're looking for a reduction in the required 12 foot setback on the secondary street um, of eight feet. Okay. This 
property sits on a corner lot and in the Higgins Beach area, um, unlike some zones, it does not count as two primary frontages. It gives the frontage on one side as the primary and the other one as secondary. Uh, the primary front frontage requires a minimum of 18, maximum 21 foot setback. Uh, the addition that goes on top of the house will be set back from the front of the house back deeper on the front of the house so that the front of the building will meet the, the addition will meet the setback for the primary frontage. It's the location of the building on the lot uh, closer to uh, the secondary frontage that requires the variance. So you're saying you're staying pretty much within the footprint or coming yes. less than? On Same, the pretty much in, in, in shape of the footprint over the building. Uh, if you were to look at the application, we do have a two and a half foot extension on the, of the back of the house. Uh, we're taking off a, a, an attachment, we're taking off part of the deck, and net result is 19 square feet more than what's there now, but it's still less than the 20% maximum lot coverage that's allowed in the, in the uh, back dune zone. Mm -hmm. So we do have like a 19 square foot increase in lot coverage. Did you have any drawings or anything you wanted to show us tonight? Or? Um, you know, we don't you have me to. I think I submitted them with the application. I just didn't know if you had anything more you wanted to show us. I know you, normally you bring well, the I presentation. Well, I do. If you want to see them, I don't have. I, I can use the back and show you if you'd like me to. No, Does anybody have any questions as to seeing them bigger? We've got them in our packets. Just, I, okay. I do have. I've got one question. Um, the side facing Burdap Street is going to be pushed in a foot. On the second floor, we're going to set the second floor in a foot. Because of the regulations? Not so much because of regulations, because we could go right to the outside, and we'd still be requesting a nine-foot variance at that point. Yeah. Uh, what it is, we set it back a foot, and I can get a little more of a detail on that sidewall so it doesn't look like a big blank sidewall going yeah. up. So we're setting it back a foot. Okay. More for character appearance than it is. I didn't want you to lose a foot because of some stupid regulation. No, it wasn't that. Anybody else have questions? Can you tell me um, real quick about the erosion hazard area and the DEP approval needed for it? I know it's unrelated. I'm just curious. We've already applied to DEP, and we have an approval from <coughs> DEP to do the proposal. Great. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Seeing none, open it up to the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll go over the questions. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The existing building is structure on the lot for which the limit reduction of yard size residential is requ requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. The existing structure was constructed in 1900 according to the assessor's records. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owners or occupants of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The existing building is a one-story structure with two small bedrooms. The horizontal expansion cannot be accomplished due to building setback restrictions and lot coverage. The building is located in the back dune area and the property is limited to 20% lot coverage. The existing building covers 19.51% of the property, and the proposal will cover 19.95% of the property. This means that the only expansion that is possible would be a second floor over a portion of the existing structure. The applicant is proposing a 22 by 23 foot second floor addition that would meet the side, rear, and primary front setbacks. The property is a corner lot with primary frontage on shipwreck and a secondary frontage on Verdap. A requested reduction on the secondary frontage of Verdap Street is reasonably necessary in order to create the bedrooms on the second floor. The abutting properties have increased their buildings to two and three stories, and many nearby properties are two stories. The proposed second floor would permit the owner to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Okay. Do the physical features of the lot or the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements? 
The existing lot has a primary street frontage of 40 feet. The CDCR1 zone requires a street frontage of 48 feet. Therefore, the lot is non-conforming. <coughs> Excuse me. The existing building location on the property is also non-conforming with respect to the primary front and secondary front setbacks. The proposed second floor addition will satisfy the primary setback requirement of 18 feet minimum, 21 foot maximum, as it will be set back approximately 12 feet from the front of the existing front wall of the building. The addition will also meet the required side, and side yard and rear setbacks. Because the existing house location does not meet the required secondary frontage on Verdap Street of 12 feet, the second floor addition will be set back one foot from the existing building wall facing Verdap Street. This will result in a second floor setback uh, of four feet from Verdap and require an eight foot reduction from 12 foot, from the 12 foot secondary street frontage. If the yard reduction variance is not granted, the second floor would only be 15 feet wide and it would be not practical to construct the expansion with that limited size. It would result in only one bedroom on the second floor, uh, and, the second, and the stairway to the second floor would eliminate one building, uh, one bedroom on the first floor, and the end result would be two bedrooms, which it already has now, so uh, if we didn't get the variance, we'd end up with a two-bedroom structure like it is now, and the owner would like to gain a couple of small bedrooms on the second floor. Okay. The impacts or effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structures on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially <coughs> different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. The impacts and effects of the proposed second floor addition will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building which conforms to the yard size requirements. Many of the existing homes in the neighborhood are two and three story in height. The proposed second floor addition will not increase the lot coverage of the property beyond the 20% maximum allowed, like I stated previously, and the open yard areas will not be affected. Thank you. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No construction has started. Um, you said that other structures around are similar. They have the same type of height. You're not blocking anybody's view or anything. Not that well, it house, matters in the what we view. Behind this one is uh, probably three times the square footage, three stories high with an attic. It mm -hmm. overlooks this house, and it will overlook this house even after the second floor is put on. The house next door used to be a one-story. It is now a full two-story house on the immediate property of other properties. So the houses around this are larger in height than what this will be. Okay. It's nice because usually if we'll have it up on the screen so we can see mm -hmm. the houses that are next to it and we can look at them and we can see that it definitely does conform. So we're missing Brian tonight. That's right. He has his little pointer and everything he does. So Yeah, I don't live in Higgins Beach, so I, I don't know at all, actually. I mean, I, I kind of know the pattern of what's going on down there, but it is helpful to see what else is out there, I guess. How's the structure right now? I mean, Structure-wise, does it have any deficits that needs to be taken care of, like electrical? It has been, yeah, it's been taken care of. It's been updated. Um, the kitchen and bathrooms have been updated and all that. That's been taken care of very well. It has a very good foundation under it. Um, the problem it has is the roof, to be honest with you. Uh, two by four rafters, and they're over two foot on center. I mean, they've been there for 100 years plus. It's not like they're going to fall down tomorrow, but they don't meet code. Um, and the uh, uh, first floor joist, to be honest with you, probably the best floor joist system on a house I've seen in Higgins Beach in many, many inspections I've done. It's, it's pretty solid, strong, uh, nothing wrong on the first floor. So the idea is to maintain the first floor walls, the first floor, and just take the roof off to add the second floor joist and go up from there. And by doing this new, new construction, they're not going to encroach on any neighbor's land no. by bringing anything in for no. machinery or anything? He has uh, a fairly good backyard on this property compared to most of them at Higgins Beach. It's over 40 feet in depth. Okay. Plenty of room to store materials and do the work without infringing on the neighbors. Okay. How many bedrooms is it now? 
Two. And so you want to add how many upstairs? There's going to be four when it's all done. Okay. Three small bedrooms on the second floor, and they lose one bedroom on the first floor when the stairway goes up. So there'll be one bedroom on the first and three bedrooms in the 22 by 23 foot second floor okay. structure. Seems reasonable. Any other questions? Do we have any letters or anything from this? We did not. Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention this beforehand. <laughs> We've already run into all the questions and everything. If there were a tie, you know it would be a loss. So if you okay. wanted to back away from it, you still can. I don't think we've had a tie in a very long time. So you understand that. No precedent tonight, then. Okay. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from anybody? Okay. Let's get down to questions. Do finding a fact and a vote. <coughs> Start off with Ms. Shoup over here. Go down through number one, the existing building, a structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size for residential is requested were erected prior to July, 30, July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Any comments, sir? No, I mean, I think the applicant has represented, and I'm sure the town records will show that the house was built in 1900. I have nothing to add. I agree. As, as the applicant say, the house was built in 1900. No comment. I think it's pretty standard. We've seen yeah. the documentation showing it was built before this, so there's really no problem there. All those in favor of one BMF? Unanimous. Two, the requested reduction reasonably, is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner or other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Oh, and there it says, with two small bedrooms. That's why I was asking, because I mean, it seems totally reasonable for you to kind of, this is like I said, the pattern that we're seeing in Higgins Beach is people are fixing up these old homes, making them nice, making them all in conformity to the guidelines and stuff like that. And so, I mean, this seems fine. I agree. The applicant's indicated that he's limiting the coverage to at or under 20%. Um, and as Ms. Shoup stated, other homes in the nearby areas confirmed by the applicant that they're all three to four bedrooms. Surrounding homes are also uh, additional stories, two stories, maybe two and a half. Uh, I agree with his answer. Um, any any single story structure at Higgins Beach is shortly going to be two or three stories. Um, people are buying them and they're making them larger so that they can live in them. And that's all this guy is doing. I, I'm 100% in support of this. Great. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, that's why I was questioning what the other properties look like in the area. If they're within the same proximity of this, and if they're looking same, similar to this, the amount of bedrooms, we're not trying to add four or five bedrooms in there. So I think with everything that you've gone over and told us about this property, it's not trying to go as much as it probably could. So <coughs> I appreciate that. And staying within the footprint is a great thing for us always, because that's what we always like to see. All those in favor of two being met? Unanimous. Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Well, the lot is non-conforming, and so you guys are already trying to deal with that. So you're trying, you can't, I don't see how you could make a reasonable expansion, an economic one, that would not be in conformance. I agree. Um, as indicated, the, the CDCR1 zone is 48 feet of frontage, and we have 40 feet here. So he's already um, working with a challenging lot. I don't have any problem with this at all. <clears throat> yeah, I think it is the physical features of the lot as it is with most of those down there. So we see this numerous times. The lots just were not made to have these houses on them. They were made to probably have cottages on them. So all in favor of three being met. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I think like we said, this is kind of the pattern that we're seeing in Higgins Beach here, and all you're trying to do is improve your property and make it a little more livable, and um, I don't think it would be anything different than the properties around it. I agree. Um, again, Home, surrounding homes are three to four bedrooms in size, two, two and a half stories. Um, there really isn't anything here that stands out to me that would be a challenge to what's already going on in that neighborhood. 
I have no problem with uh, his answer. Yeah, the impacts and effects, like I asked, I mean, you're not building something that's out of the ordinary out there. It's not going to create something that's towering over other houses. So I think staying within that envelope is a big thing as well. So all in favor for being met. Unanimous. The applicant has not commenced construction or enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limit reduction in yard size is requested, so the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. And the applicant has represented that they have not started construction. I will take that. I agree. I went by there the other day. I didn't see any construction going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're taking the applicant at the word that they haven't constructed anything so far, so I think we're good with that one. All those in favor of 5 being met? I have a motion. Uh, move to approve Applica appeal number 2639. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous, no tie. Thank you very much. Good luck. Welcome. Appeal number 2640, a practical difficulty variance request by Patricia Nutting and the John Kelso <coughs> 1995 re revocable trust, 2205, assessor's map U21, parcel 94. Could you please state your name and who you're representing? Yes. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is Michael Skolnick from Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, representing Patricia Nutting as well as Bill Nutting. And uh, what they're looking to do is construct a 12 by 26 foot deck on the front of their on the side of their house the interesting part of their parcel actually is the fact that it has three frontages in at the end of a street it's one it's interesting the fact that it's a 40 foot setback in the front of their parcel for all fronts so they actually only have about an 18 foot wide building envelope <laughs> that their house is actually constructed in the middle of the lot, so they really couldn't go anywhere with this. It was constructed in 1962, before zoning was in play. And unlike the Higgins Beach zone, where Walter just mentioned, there actually is no primary and secondary frontage in this zone. It all has to be subject to the 40-foot setback. What we're really asking for is that you look <coughs> at this more as a primary frontage and secondary frontage. Otherwise, there really would be no room for an actual building to be put on this natural building envelope. As of right now, the house is encroaching 10 feet into that front setback along Driftwood Lane. We're asking you to kind of look at it as the 15-foot side yard setback instead, where we would actually be three feet uh, from that setback itself. So we're asking for an 18 foot reduction in the 40 foot setback and um, would be happy to answer any questions you have about the project. Could you give us the information on your end, please? Uh, sure. I, I think that you know, the applicant's representative did a good job of giving you an overview, so I'll just sort of touch on the uh, practical uh, or the uh, applicable zoning, I should say. Um, so as it's mentioned, the applicant is before you for a practical difficulty variance. The property is eligible for uh, such a request, again, providing they can demonstrate evidence that they meet the standards as the property is not in either the shoreland zone or the floodplain zone. Um, so the applicant, so the board will need to go through the uh, review criteria as uh, established in the zoning ordinance, Roman numeral 5B6. Um, and in addition, and as board members are probably familiar with, given recent court cases as part of the variance uh, appeal, that the appellate must also prove that the uh, strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance would both preclude the use of the property which is permitted in the zone and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. So, Is there any other staff comments? Uh, not at this time. Got to no. have these ones with more than one furniture. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, make the same comment to you as well. We do have four members, so if you want us to proceed, we will. Two-two tie would be a no. Okay. 
I'm hoping that you all think that we should go for it. So. <laughs> all right. Any questions from the board? Not at this time. Open it up for the public hearing. Would you like to speak? If you'd like to step up and speak. Uh, uh, I don't have much to say. I just uh, right. I stopped. You have to go up there. You to the mic. <laughs> yeah. If you start talking, you got to get on the mic. <laughs> I'm uh, Bill Nutting. I'm the uh, applicant's son-in-law. Okay. I'm going to do the carpentry if approved. But uh, before she bought the property, I stopped in with a realtor to talk to Brian. asked him what he thought about throwing a deck on there because, you know, obviously that's the best part of the house would be the second floor deck seeing the ocean. And uh, he said, without checking it out further, he didn't know for sure, but he said it didn't seem like a problem at all, looking at the lot size and the house size and all that. And so I just took it at that. And uh, then when the time came, I tried to do a different variance, the reduction, reduction variance. He told me to go ahead and do that. That should be no problem to do that. So I started all the paperwork on that. And, submitted it to him and then he looked at it and said you're already too close to the road so that won't work you'll have a you can get a four foot deck maybe so i tabled that and hired these guys so nice great thank you that's why brian's not here tonight huh? <laughs> <laughs> seeing no one else is here for the public hearing i close the public hearing um right, we'll get down through the questions and you can read your answers The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood? Um, it's absolutely due to the unique circumstances of the property. It's at the end of the road and has three roads actually going around this parcel, making it three front yard setbacks, unlike anything else on the street or any abutters. So it forces it into nonconformance, actually. And due to the fact that it was built in 1962, before the zoning was actually in place, the zoning actually put, it's not a hardship variance, but the hardship on the parcel itself. Okay. If you did consider it a side yard setback, then it would be conforming to that side yard. Okay. Granting of the variance will not produce an unde undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the budding properties? Absolutely not. Um, it, we had an overhead view today. You could see that the three houses on the end of the roads in Going it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> going towards the beach themselves actually have decks or not maybe not on the side of the house per se, but decks where you could have a view of the ocean if they were tall enough. And this house just wants to be brought into conformance with the rest of the neighborhood and houses like that. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or of the prior owner. Um, it's taken 100% built in 1962 by the zoning ordinance that was placed on it. And a lot of towns and a lot of zones in, or at least one zone in Scarborough that I know about in the Higgins Beach zone has the secondary and primary frontage where this actually wouldn't be considered the primary frontage based on the fact that it's not the major road. Okay. This is the one that always gets me. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. This one, I think it's pretty obvious that there's no building envelope, so there is no option to do anything with this parcel <laughs> unless you have a variance. The granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties? As I stated earlier, that the house is uh, similar to this property at the end of their respective roads. They all have decks oh, kind of oh, overlooking or have a view towards the ocean, and this brings it into conformance with that. Okay. Granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably <coughs> as adverse effect on the natural environment? Um, it has no effect on the natural environment. It's a 100% developed lot. Okay. The property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland zone as defined in 38 MRSA 435 or flood hazard zone as defined in the Town of Scarborough Flood Plan Management Ordinance? No, it is not. Okay. Any questions from the board now? Wow. Um, you guys are quiet tonight. <laughs> well, my question is going to be the same question it always is. There is a feasible alternative. Don't put the deck on. <laughs> so, 
You need to I guess provide so. me with some reasons as to why can, it really needs to I can to be rebut there. that with pretty much what Brian said. Um, the economic injury to this parcel, per se, is if you didn't have this deck on there, it doesn't nearly meet the reasonable return that any of the similar properties in the area do have. If you go to rent this property out per week like people do in this area, you won't get nearly as much money for it as you would if you had the second floor deck overlooking the ocean. If he goes to resell this property eventually, it's significant injury in the fact that if you had this deck on and if you considered it a side, side front and you would be allowed to put this deck on, then you would be able to sustain a, a much higher yield off the property itself. The thing with me is they still bought it. So that's a tough one for me. I'm just telling you my point, my point on it. Let's get down through the questions. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition in the neighborhood. I mean, clearly we've established that this is a very unique property with three roads coming through it. Um, and as you said, I mean, I don't think you can do anything to the property without getting some permission here. Um, so yeah, I think you've met that. Uh, three frontages on a property is an exception. Um, it's, it's from what I have seen come before here, it's, it's very rare to have a property with three frontages on it that are so constrictive and not allowing you to build anything on this property, essentially. You know, if you, if you go back to when they built this original home, they did a nice job of placing it on the lot, didn't they? <laughs> it's it's really, really nice. It's right smack dab in the middle. And then the zoning comes along and says, everything is wrong. I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm 100% in favor of this. Yeah, I mean, I don't think in all my years on the board I've seen three frontages. I've seen a couple frontages for things that we've dealt with over the last year, actually, but three is new to me. Yeah. So I think it's definitely unique to the circumstances of this property. All those in favor of one being met? It's unanimous. Two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either Come on. I know, I gotta have to put them on. Either the <laughs> use of the fair market value of the abutting properties? Uh, no, I mean, not at all. I mean, again, this is a pattern we're seeing also in Pine Point as well, as the houses are being fixed up, and I'm seeing a lot of houses with the decks on the second floor just like that. So, no, I mean, you're increasing the value of the property and the ones around it. And this will also tie into part of my explanation for question five, but, you know, bringing the house up to more uh, aesthetic quality and characteristics of the other houses nearby, not only enhances the house, but enhances the houses around it, um, and will certainly not have a detrimental effect on uh, abutting properties. Yeah, I agree with that. It's not going to have any effect at all. In fact, if, if it, anything, it's going to have a positive effect. Yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> Putting the deck, you stated that other houses would be great if we could see them, but you said that you have other houses in the area that do have the decks. If that's true, then this is pretty much coming up to the character and not creating an, any undesirable change. All those in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Uh, no, this was not a result of an action taken by the owner. I mean, the house was constructed before the ordinances were applied. They indicate it was constructed in 1962, which as Ms. Shoup said, predates all ordinances. Yeah, certainly not their fault. It'd be great if the prior owner had built it with a deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favor of three being met? It's unanimous. Four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Well, the applicant is applying to put a deck on their second floor. And to do that, the only option they have is to come before us today. Um, and so the alternative is to not do a deck. Um, is that feasible? I don't know. Let me hear what the board has to say. I, I'm, I'm typically on the side of, of, of thinking that, you know, it's an unnecessary luxury that, you, that you're putting on this property. Um, however, back to my, um, my comments in, on question one, 
you know, there are three frontages on this property that is constricting the building envelope severely and not really allow you to do anything with this structure. Um, so I find that is, uh, it, one, it's very constricting. It, it takes away value from your property because you're not able to really enhance it with any, I'll say, standard amenities that other homes are able to enjoy um, because of the position, even though the, as it was stated, the building is centered on the lot. It's as far away from the setbacks as possible, but it's still in violation due to the three frontages. Um, so I can see this as, uh, you know, having, having an economic injury, as you stated, with um, this house can't have the same similar amenities as other houses have in the neighborhood. Maybe not all houses, but most of them anyways, and most of them are, are able to do that. So um, there's no real building envelope here. Um, first of all, I think this question is stupid. <laughs> Feasible alternative. What does that really mean? That he wants to put on a deck. So doing nothing is not a feasible alternative. No, he's coming to us, he wants to put on a deck. There is no other feasible alternative. Because the town has imposed so many restrictions on him. I think he answers this question 100%. I struggle with this one all the time because it can go either way. I mean, we can either look at it as you can't do, if you do nothing, or we can look at it as we've got to give this variance because of the fact that this is what they're looking to do. And that's what we're trying to find a way to work into this. But it, it's, I've been to all, all the meetings I've been to, it's tough because they basically tell you if this question can't be met, I mean, we've had land where people have had land that they own and they can put canoes on them. They bought it for a reason, to put their canoes on and walk to the beach. Then they came and asked for a house to be put on it. Couldn't do it. So, I mean, this one, the board may overrule me, but I always go no on this one. So, it's Are just the way I've always been. Are there any other alternatives? Have you looked? I mean, is there any room to put a deck somewhere else? I mean, I'm looking at feasible alternatives to putting a deck somewhere. He says don't build a deck. I'm saying, no, you want a deck. Is there an alternative to put it somewhere else? Well, and th th Mr. Chairman, I don't mean to go against you, but it's kind of going to. Um, <laughs> for this case scenario, there's absolutely no feasible alternative to do anything with this lot. And there's always a feasible alternative to not do anything. I mean, you can always argue that, and that's usually why you vote no on this question. But you can do nothing, but they want to build a deck. There's no other place you can build a deck. There's no way to do that, let alone anything else on this property development-wise, without coming to this board. So, but my point goes back to it obviously had a monetary value if they wouldn't bought it in the first place. No. So, they did buy it. So they're not going to really seek any economic harm if they turn around and sell it because they bought it without the deck. They would sell it without the deck. That's just my thought on it. All those in favor of five uh, four being met. All those opposed. Three to one. The granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more li nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. I think this is a pretty easy one. I mean, again, I think you're just trying to bring your property, um, improve it, make it nicer, and make it look more conforming into the properties in Pine Point and kind of what people are doing down there right now. Yeah, uh, as I previously stated, it's not out of the ordinary for homes to have a deck or even a second floor deck. Uh, or a third floor balcony on some of these places. So it's nothing that's out of the ordinary that would um, certainly bring it less into conformance. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't have any comment on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with what we've been told from what you're telling us is basically it's bringing it more into conformance as other ones that have decks down there. This is kind of putting it more into the conformance down there and surrounding properties to have them all have a deck that's similar to this on the back. So all those in favor of five being met, it's unanimous. Six, granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. I think this is pretty self-explanatory too. Um, it will not. 
Yep, they've stated they're not in a wetland, they're not in a flood zone, they're not in a shoreland zone, overlay district. Um, I don't see any adverse effect on the natural environment here. No adverse effect on wildlife. There's no piping plovers down there, right? <laughs> well, there are, but not in this property. Not All right. Yeah. <laughs> good. We're good with that. <laughs> All those in favor of 6 being met? It's unanimous. Seven, the property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area as defined in 38 MRSA 435 or flood hazard zone as defined in the town of Scarborough's floodplain management ordinance. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. The applicant has shown us, and I'm sure the town records will confirm it is not. Agreed, it's not. I agree with his answer. It's not much to go on here, so I mean, basically, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like any of this is going to apply. All those in favor of seven being met? Motion? I'll move to approve appeal number 2640. I'm confused. What about the practical difficulty so, part? Yeah, oh, sorry. The last sort of question. Oh, excuse me. As we mentioned, per the fairly recent court case, so this isn't, yep. Okay, so we got to go over these. Yep. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for catching that. Thanks, Jack. Following words have the meaning set forth below. Dimensional standards, those provisions of this ordinance which relate to a lot area, lot coverage, frontage, and setback, including buffered requirements. Practical difficulty, a case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance of the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone and which is in located and also <coughs> would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. And this is where you're going to lose me, unfortunately, because, and this is why the courts are kind of bringing this up, and I'm struggling a little bit with this one, because I would imagine other people did look at this property, because that's a very popular place to buy, and I can't imagine that maybe someone else did come to town and say, oh, well, I don't want this property, because you can't expand on it, and you can't do that. Um, you know, you bought the property, and it's there, and it's rentable. Um, you're not telling us that it's dilapidated, and that it needs to be fixed up, and it needs this work, and in the, on top of this work, we want to do a deck. It's just, we just want to do a deck so we can make more money. You know, um, you can make money renting it. I mean, I know the market down there, and I know it's hot, and you might not make the top dollar, but I don't think that you would suffer a significant economic injury at all by not being able to build this deck. Thank you for catching these two. Thank you. Um, I think as far as... Uh, representing the property with other properties of similar size and aesthetic quality in the area that do have decks, there would be not necessarily a loss, but not a gain on this either. Um, again, I'm, I'm falling back to the unique circumstance and understanding that a variance is an exception and not, and not the rule here. Um, I'm falling back on the three frontages on this property that's really hindering you to build anything on this on this plot of land um, so I think just due to the nature of that property and wanting to just put a deck on the building and not being allowed to also indicated there hasn't been any public uh, letters or anything no. like that yeah. of opposing this um, and uh, I, I don't think that um, We've already closed the public hearing, sir. Um, um, yeah, sir. As the applicant, he can't speak on his own behalf. You, you can answer a question if the board asks you a question or asks them a question, but we have closed the public hearing. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay. I don't understand what we're uh, talking about here. We went through all the questions. It's the bottom two, one and two, B one and two. I mean, my understanding is the court is telling us we have to consider if he is going to have a significant loss. And I mean, do we have to your book? Oh. And they're saying if, I, I want to understand this, are they saying that if without a deck, no significant loss, like, I mean, that's not an economic loss to me, no deck. Does that mean we have to deny it? Mr. Chair? Give us some guidance on this. I'm looking for some Um yeah, I guess the, again, it, it really will come back to the board. I hate to sort of kick it back to you, but this is, you know, where you guys have to sort of make the decision based on the evidence that's uh, prepared uh, by the applicant. But I think as, as was noted, there was a, a recent court case that the town was involved in, and that's where the judge said the board needs to make a finding on the, on this provision. Um, and so... I think that was the issue that the board previously had is had gone through 
you know, uh, uh, Roman numeral section 5, 6A, which has those seven standards, but didn't touch on uh, B. Uh, and so that's, that's, that was the remand that we received um, with that case, and so that's why we're suggesting that the board needs to grapple with it in this case. Good, if I can add one thing. Um, reinforcing my, my opinion on this, um, again, due to the three frontages on this property, you're not allowed to, do, to essentially build anything within this envelope. Therefore, any sort of updates or additions or modifications you wish to make to this house, you're unable to do. Uh, even if the character if the character code were to change in, year, in a few years from now, 10 to even 20 years from now, um, they would still be limited by the current code by, um, of not being able to make any modifications to this home, i.e. putting a deck on. So I consider that a significant economic injury. I would have to disagree because a significant injury would be don't buy the property. You can't use it like it is. So, I mean, I don't feel it's a significant economic injury without the deck. I can't decide if the unique circumstances of the property trump the economic here. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you this. I mean, this is what we're deciding here. And, um, you know, we're being told this practical difficulty thing is really important. And, um, but that is a very unique property. Yeah. It's very unique. And, and I would say due to the unique circumstance of the property and those setbacks that are in place right now based on the current codes that they should be allowed to build this. And they do want to improve the neighborhood and improve their own property so they do get a value out of it. I understand that they can and did buy the house to get their own value. However, this brings so much more to everyone else's property as well around them. It's not just their own property that is maybe not sustaining an economic injury for them, but maybe other properties are in the surrounding area gaining an economic injury from not granting this variance. I would find that hard to believe down there. That's a, that's a, that's a stretch <laughs> to try to say people with houses down next to them are getting an economic injury because they don't have a deck on their house. Can we say that the practical difficulty is the practical difficulty is the property, deck or no deck, anything they try to do would be somewhat economically difficult because of the unique circumstances of the property. And that's where I'm kind of coming from. And I the, see where James is saying that. The fact and that I would, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say I would offer, for, so long as the board I think, makes a finding and a rationale for its decision, a, a court a judge will sort of look at that and defer. Typically, judges want to defer to a board so long as you've made your decision based on the evidence in the record and that you've clearly stated your rationale. Right. Um, they're not in the, typically, and if a judge reads this, hopefully they don't reprimand me for saying this, but typically they're not interested in uh, overriding or reconsidering uh, sound findings by a local board. They just want to be sure the local board has done its proper due diligence. Right. So I would say... So we'll start down here with the findings of facts and go forward and then we'll put a vote. I appreciate the conversation that we've had because I think I have come around a little and I do feel that due to the unique circumstances of the property, um, you guys do kind of have some issues in regards to that and at some point I do think it would be some, an economic issue that you would face in regards to anything you would want to do to that property because you would have to come before us in town and deal with that. Um, it's a very unique property. And I, I do feel that you have met the qualifications. I'll, I'll reiterate again that um, obviously a variance is an exception and not the rule here. Um, it's, it's not our, um, sorry. I'm viewing this from the perspective of the, the very rare uniqueness of this particular parcel. There are three frontages here. There are very few others with this sort of restriction in this area. Um, and again, as Ms. Shoup said, you can't really place anything on this property without having to come before us. Um, so based on the unique circumstances of this property, I feel that justifies them being awarded this variance. I agree with that. Well said. 
I, I would again fall back to my, my four that I looked at. I mean, they bought the property. They knew what they were getting when they bought the property. I mean, I don't think it's going to affect the neighbors for them not putting on a deck and the neighbors will not be able to rent the property or enjoy their property like they do. That's just my own personal opinion. All those in favor of B1 and 2 being met? Opposed? Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve appeal number 2640. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Passes 3 to 1. Thank you very much. Welcome. Do we have any zoning board comments for this meeting? <laughs> I will say um, the lady next to me did a wonderful job of tabbing my book. If anybody has tabbed their books, it's a great thing because. Before she, August 3rd? <laughs> she did a really good job with it. So you don't have to look at the sheet. You bring your book with you, and it will have all these nice little tabs right there that will show you where we're going and all the questions. So we won't have to look up anything. Um, we are also losing the lady next to me at the end of the month. She's moving on to a different location and will be sorely missed by all of us, especially me, because she's really helped me out a lot just trying to get acclimated and run these meetings. Yeah. So she's done a wonderful job, and I'm sure the town appreciates you being here and all the stuff that you've done for us and continue to do. Thank you. And I appreciate you, Karen. Since I started, you were sitting right next to me, kind of helping me along the whole time. So I really appreciated that. Thank you. We'll miss you. Hope you guys are getting a cake or something. We'll do it. We'll right. we'll have to invite us. <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, Melinda's still performing across the street at O'Reilly's <laughs> for another hour. I yelled at Patrick O'Reilly about letting her perform tonight. Yeah. She's there. Um, we, are, we are also looking for two board members because it's very difficult. If anybody is anxious to join this wonderful board, we appreciate you having, having you here. Um, I know you had a friend that was talking about it. We do need to fill those two seats because it could have come down really to a tie tonight. If Ms. Shoup didn't change her mind on that, it could have come down to a 2-2 mm. tie, and it could have ended that way. It's very important. We're only asking for one Wednesday out of the month. If you want to be on the board, please show up that one, men one men's Wednesday. And if you want to come and join us, we'd be glad to have you um, working through. We have two members that are going off at the end of the year, so we're definitely going to need some members before the end of the year. Any other comments? Actually, if sure. I could, I appreciate that the board members took time to uh, give Karen her, her due, um, and we will certainly keep you informed uh, as our plans for her leaving come together. And, um, but one thing I did want, one other item I did want to bring to note is, and I think the discussion we just had um, is, is a good segue in terms of uh, one of the things that I've been talking with our planning board about and, and Brian Longstaff about is having a... Uh, a joint workshop with the Planning Board and Board of Appeals, bringing in the town's attorney to really talk about the board's role and responsibility as you sit in your quasi-judicial uh, seats. You know how, and it will really build on. I know MMA is doing a training, which at least I think two or three folks are signed up to do on, yeah, right? yep. on yeah. July 26, and we can sort that. of, you know, you, you can go to that one and. Formulate some questions. We'll probably look to coordinate something with trying to get all Board of Appeals members, planning board members, staff, town attorney, all. I'm guessing we're at least a month out, but I just wanted to put a put a bug in your ear that we are looking to do that. I'm seeing yeah. a lot of nodding heads that you think that's a good idea, so that's idea. generally what I was yeah. hoping to hear. So uh, we will endeavor to do that. So stay tuned for that as well. And this cool. is something that's going to bring the two boards together probably for the first time. Since I've been on the zoning board of yeah. appeals, we've never actually sat together with the yeah. town attorney and discussed things. It would so be I like think it'd an be a really great thing. An event of special magnificence. <laughs> Excellent. And that it will be labeled as such on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. You win or lose. I said 8.15. Yep.